we look at the practical side of sitting. So variety is really important in sitting, as I said. Um, so all the little seats um, that are out there have their place. Um, floor sitting is probably the easiest to work on. Um, you can use your leg as a little chair. So that's more 90-90 sitting. And 90-90 sitting is just where you have your child's hip, knee and foot. Your <laughs> knees don't bend, do they? At 90 degrees to each other. You sort of see what I'm saying there. Um, so feet flat on the floor, knees bent um, into that 90-90 position. So they're getting some weight through their feet, which is really nice developmentally when we're thinking about standing, which we're not doing yet, but um, it's a nice position to be in. You can also do straddle sitting. So across your legs. So if you've got a child who has quite high toe, tends to scissor their legs, then this can be a nice position to work in because you can still give lots of support, but you're just reducing the tone a little bit in the legs, which will hopefully reduce tone generally or normalize the tone generally and um, allow them to work on their sitting balance. That's a nice position as well. Um, also really useful, which is a bit further down the line when sitting balance is improving, are the little um, steps that you use to step up to the sink or the toilet and um, sort of toddler age group. They're usually a really nice height, really lightweight, carry them anywhere, um, but they're really nice to do some therapeutic sitting on as well. Obviously no balance, um, uh, no support rather, um, it is just sitting like sitting on my knee, um, but they're a really good little um, height and I often suggest that families buy one of those little steps, they're very useful in helping sitting balance. Um, like I said before, high chairs, even though you've got lots of support in the high chair, um, you're still working on that sitting balance, you're um, learning on learning pelvic control, sort of moderating how your muscles are working together. So variety of movements, really, really important. Um, the ball, I bought the ball with me today, like a therapy ball. Don't know how many of you have got therapy balls at home, but they are really nice for working on sitting balance because they're fun. You can sing songs and um, yeah, they're just fun. Children like them a lot. So to start with, with the balance, um, you'll need to give support quite high up. So just under the chest, under the armpits, um, give your child support because it could be frightening to start with. So when you introduce the ball, do it very carefully. Um, yeah, so high up support on the chest. And what you're going to do is just rock the ball side to side, forwards and backwards. So your child will develop the ability to correct their position going forwards first. So as you move the child forwards, they will be able to lift their head and keep alignment. Then they learn lateral saving side to side. And finally, it's that backwards tip that they engage flexors and or pull forwards. But it's just nice practice to be in that position, very gentle. Obviously, as sitting balance improves, you can get the movements bigger or faster within reason. You basically don't want to terrify your child, you want to make it fun. Um, so it's just a nice position to practice that in. So as stability improves and strength improves, you can reduce the support needed. So rather than being up at the chest, you can move your hands down towards their pelvis. So you're still providing lots of support there, um, but they are having to work a bigger area of their trunk. Um, but doing the same things, forwards, backwards, side to side. Then once they can cope with that, you can actually move your hands onto thighs, which is a nice one. Whoops, my baby can't quite cope with that. So I've got control here. So if your baby were to tip backwards, and um, we chose to tip backwards, you would have control, um, but just supporting the top of their thighs. So it's just reducing that support as your child is able. So starting around the chest, moving down to the hips, and then onto the thighs and using the therapy ball just to move forwards, backwards and side to side. And you're looking for that correction. So as you tip your child forwards, they'll lift head up 
as you tip your, tip your jaw to the side. I just hope you see an arm come, up, come out as counterbalance and correct more than the head falling down this way. You'll have alignment of the head. That's what you want to see in that position. And then when you come backwards, rather than the head tipping back and losing balance, you'll see the flexor muscles come into play and pull each other forwards. So that's just a few things you can do on the ball. Okay, what else have we got? Propping, that's a biggie. And this is probably, it, it can be difficult for children with a high tone or low tone, um, but those children who have quite low tone and low tone shoulder girdles um, do find development of propping quite tricky and it can be quite delayed. And um, so there's lots of things you can do to work on um, propping with their arms. So by propping, all I'm talking about is with a hand on the floor and it's supporting your body weight. So to start with, you can just put hand over hand. You might have to help keep the elbow straight rather than it just collapsing down, just giving a bit of support, just getting a bit of weight through that arm just to practice that feeling. And every time they're putting weight through an aligned arm, the muscles in the shoulder are all engaging, getting stronger and stronger. So every time they're doing that, they're practicing um, that propping skill. And you can see how that overlaps with all the tummy time develop we, development we've been talking about, talking about the forearm propping and pushing up on extended elbows. That is happening at the same time as a child is learning to prop in sitting so they're all working together. Sometimes physios might suggest using a gaiter, I don't know whether any of you have used gaiters, um, it's almost like a cricket pad which you just sort of velcro onto the arm, just splints the elbow out straight basically so it goes from the armpit to wrist and it just is a pair of hands basically so as I was doing then as the child's hands are down they just put a bit of weight through that arm rather than me having to support that elbow, that shoulder, entertain in front, <laughs> motivate. Um, it's just a separate um, pair of hands, but it can be really useful. So if, if the gaiter is on there and the hand is flat and you, the child has got weight through that arm, it's gonna stay there. And then you can put some really exciting things over here and get your child to play with them. There's some lovely weight going through that arm. And that's really important. Propping and weight bearing for the arm is really important for normalizing tone. Um, if you've got high tone, then it can help normalize and reduce tone. Um, if you've got low tone, then it can stimulate stability around the shoulder girdle. Um, it's a really nice activity and it's really important weight bearing through the limbs in an aligned position. So when I'm talking about aligned, basically, if you put your arm out and put weight on it, um, you're invariably going to put it in a lined position. So you've got your hip, your elbow and your wrist all in one line. So if you see, see your child doing it in a funny position, um, then that's not aligned. So basically just straighten it up until it's in a position where you can see that weight is going directly from the shoulder through the elbow to the hand. Now a nice position to practice, and I do this a lot, is side sitting. So is side sitting. So you have one hip that is externally rotated and one hip that is internally rotated. Now children won't do that independently until quite a long way down the line of learning sitting when it's becoming much more dynamic and almost at the point where they're transitioning between sitting um, and tummy lying. They need to be able to do it then but that's quite a long way down the line. But Physios might suggest you use this early on um, just to aid propping and also some children have quite a lot of stiffness and tightness in their hips. So those children who um, are quite low tone and have quite splayed out froggy hips um, find it really difficult to get into that position and don't really use that position. So just practicing very gently rotating your child's hip in that side sitting position is a nice position to play in and practice being in because you need that internal rotation of your hips then to move into that tummy line position um, so that is important so side sitting obviously remember to do it both sides 
Um, so you've got that aligned sitting. So this hip is going to be externally rotated and this one is internally rotated. So I'm doing the same thing, internally rotating. And then you want to put the toy about here to motivate the child to reach in that direction so that the weight is going through the arm that is propping. Okay, so that side sitting and propping is a nice activity to do. Once your child is becoming a little bit more dynamic and reaching out for toys, what you want to work on is that, that weight shift. So when they can prop through an arm successfully, what you want to do is just begin to put toys a little bit out of their base of support. So they'll be playing happily within their base of support and they don't have to transfer their weight too much. But what you want them to do is to start transferring their weight a little bit more. You'll find that they'll fall over a lot to start with. Again, that's fine as long as you've got cushions and you're there to catch them, but they need to practice and work out um, how to control that movement. So it is all about that repetition. You'll find children fall over and sitting all the time and that's how they learn. So you might find they begin to put some weight on that hand for propping and they can transfer their weight and reach a little bit further. So it's all about placement of toys. You can place them to the same side for reaching or you can have one arm propping and getting them to rotate and reach. So putting toys just out of their base of support. So to start with, it's forwards. I said they learn how to reach forwards and backwards first. Then it's from side to side. And then you can be really mean and use a little bit of rotation. So putting toys behind them. So they're having to reach around to get the toy. That's just developing all those muscles. Um, in their trunk that they need for sitting. So that is reach, forwards, backwards, rotating, weight transition. Right, but actually I'll use wedge next. My wedge arrived. So this is what I've been talking about in some of the other set of sessions. This is a size wedge that I find really useful. You can see. So it's useful for tummy lying, um, and lots of prone developments, so you're not flat against gravity. You can put cushions up here so that you can have hands um, actually weight bearing through a surface rather than just dangling, or that the bigger child can actually get hands on the floor and lift head up. So this is a lovely wedge. But um, this is also nice for practicing sitting balance as well. So if you're sitting on a wedge, you're naturally, whoop, there you go, <laughs> you're naturally. I'm going to have to work much harder because it tilts your pelvis forward and you have to work a little bit harder um, to keep your head up against gravity. So actually sitting on a wedge is a nice thing to practice as well. It's also really useful when we're practicing transitions, um, which I will go through now just to make life a little bit easier for your child. So transitions. To start with, when I'm teaching parents transitions, it looks really fiddly, and it, it is really fiddly when you're doing it for the first time, but it's something that just with repetition, 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 your child gets used to being handled that way. They will begin to join in, and it just becomes second nature. And it's something I would suggest, even from an early stage of sitting development, um, if your child has difficulty with movement, um, to carry out every time you're transitioning them from lying into sitting, it might be worth what we do is go to side lying, put upper hand on their hip, so you're anchoring their pelvis just over that little curve of their iliac arch of their pelvis, putting your hand over here, put your other hand underneath the armpit and they're working together to counterbalance each other. So you're just putting a little bit of weight through the pelvis, under the arm, and just bringing them up into sitting. Now you want to do this really slowly so that your child can actively join in. And what you want to see is them putting their hand down, and pushing themselves up into the sitting position. So this is really nice. It's a movement that they will learn later on. So it's nice to set down those pathways um, and let them experience that movement. But also it's really nice for development of propping and using 
um, hands and saving reaction. So I'll just go through that one again for you. So it's in side lying. So every time you're bringing your child up, just into side lying, you're going to put your top hand over the top of the pelvis, bottom hand underneath the armpit, working together to bring them up into sitting. Slowly, slowly wait for your child to put their hand down and bring them up into that sitting position. Obviously, it's on the other side, side lying, hand over the pelvis, other hand underneath the arm. Just bring them up into that sitting position, wait for your child to put their hand down and push themselves up into sitting. So that's a really nice thing to practice to work on propping um, and practicing that movement. But like I said earlier, more likely your child is going to learn to get into sitting from the tummy lying position. Um, so you can help guide them through that, we call it facilitating them. Um, so just helping them along a little bit with that movement. Um, and again, that repetition, repetition, every time you're doing it, um, is laying down, help to lay down those pathways of movement that your child can learn. So, tummy lying. Sideways, I think is best. If your child's flat on their tummy, um, if they're not pulling up into that four point position themselves, then you can help them to do that. And all I do is pop my hands under the pelvis and just lift. And you'll find at that point, once they're in that position, hopefully your child can push up on their arms into the four point kneel position. So once they're in that position, you're then going to bring their weight over one side and wait for that arm again to push, push, push up into sitting. So I'll go through that again for you. The child's on their front. So usually the pelvis, if it, the child has got higher tone, finds it difficult to use flexion, um, you might have to really support them to get that flex activity. And then just give them a little bit of time and usually they'll push up. And they might need a bit of help just to push up onto arms. So you're in that four point kneeling position. Once you're in that position, then you're bringing the weight to one side really slowly and allowing them to push up into sitting. And like I said at the start of today, when they're pushing up into that position and hands are down, what you want to see is the bottom leg, this leg, move forwards. And sometimes that's what gets stuck. So they might need a little bit more support at the shoulder to allow that leg to come forwards and come into that sitting position because you do need a lot of flexibility around the hip to allow that movement to happen. So the child with a higher tone that might be less flexible might find that quite tricky. And that's why it's really important all along um, with a child with high tone to keep their joints mobile, keep stretching, um, changing position um, and keeping those hips nice and flexible in order to carry out um, these exercises because if they're uh, these functions because if their hips are tight and literally can't get in these positions and um, then it's going to be very difficult for them to learn the movement and um, so lots of flexibility around the hips is required at this stage um, so it's understandable that some children who have that increased tone find some of these movements really challenging um, because of that high tone um, and may need a lot of help to learn some of these movements so I've covered transitions, um, I've looked at the wedge, oh yes, quickly I said how I'd show you the wedge. So when I talked about um, helping your child get up from side lying into sitting, okay, to make it a lot easier, you could bring the wedge in. So you can just practice popping them in side lying. Obviously you can see using the wedge, you've taken away um, a bit of that effort that's required to go from a horizontal position up and it's much easier for them to push up into sitting. And they're learning at that point, although they're not going down from a flat position, they're learning the process and they're taking good weight through their hands um, and their arms, developing that shoulder girdle stability. Um, but just using the wedge can just be really helpful just to make it successful. And if your child is successful and enjoys moving from that position, um, you can gradually move it away 
they've still got a little bit of support there until they can do it flat from the floor. So wedge is really lovely. Um, I find that that's sometimes been key um, to a lot of children learning this movement, just by giving them a little wedge um, has just allowed them to succeed in that movement. That's what I was just gonna say about that one. So I think that's covered um, most of the practical side, um, facilitating those movement transitions from sitting to lying and lying to sitting providing lots of opportunity to practice sitting either on the floor, on your lap, on a little seat, on a wedge, in a high chair, on a rocking horse, anywhere um, is really useful. Think about how you're supporting your child, whether it's up in the trunk, down on the pelvis or just the thighs that's required. Um, allowing your child to fall over is okay as long as it's safe. Um, and that's that repetition is is how they learn um, and working on the propping really important to learn on the, to develop that propping so lots of tummy time um, really beneficial for that shoulder stability arm strength to allow the propping that you see in a sitting position and obviously we covered using the ball which is really nice for writing the action development any questions?